Hey guys, what's up? I'm Ashraf from Mr. Phone and today I'm not going to be in front of camera. I have three phones in front of you and we're going to be doing a complete performance comparison of three processors, three of the most powerful mid-range processors out there on phones that are priced under rupees 20,000. So we have the Kirin 810 on the Honor 9X Pro and we have the Snapdragon 730G on the Poco X2 and the Helio G90T on the Redmi Note 8 Pro. Today I'm going to find out, run benchmarks and a few games to understand which one of these phones is actually the best when it comes to performance. So without wasting any time, let's get on with our video. But before we move on, don't forget to hit that red subscribe button and the bell icon right next to it to get notified whenever Mr. Phone puts out an awesome new tech video. All right, so for the very first test, I'm going to start off with benchmarks. I just have two benchmarks for you guys. I've got Geekbench and Antutu, but I'm going to be running Geekbench first on all three phones. So let's just open it up for you guys. And all right, so what I'm going to be doing right now is running the benchmark at least thrice. So let's do the first run and then we'll come back to it once the benchmark is run through completely. All right, so this is the first run and we've passed the halfway mark and the Kirin 810 is actually leading, but uh, you know, the 730G is also coming in really close, but the G90T is slightly behind. So let's see what the final score will look like. All right, so it looks like our first run of Geekbench is complete and we have the score on the Kirin 810 on your screen right now and it's got a score of 580 in the single core test and it's got a score of 1862 in the multi-core performance. Now also uh, close on the heels of the Kirin 810, we can see that the Snapdragon 730G has also completed its run and it's got 546 compared to uh, 580 on the Kirin 10 and it's got a multi-core score of 1696. Now we're only waiting for the Helio G90T to complete the run to figure out where it stands. All right, and all the three phones have completed their test runs on Geekbench and we have the final scores for you right now. And the Geekbench score on the Helio G90T is 488 for the single core score and 1515 for the multi-core score. So evidently, the Kirin A10 is the most powerful CPU performance that you can get on a mid-range smartphone under 20,000 right now. So what I'm gonna be doing, obviously this is just the Geekbench run, I'm gonna be running Antutu as well, but for now what I'm also gonna be doing is doing couple more runs of Geekbench just to average out the scores to ensure that you know we don't miss out on any discrepancies. So let's start off with the uh, rest of the two runs. All right, unsurprisingly, once again, the Kirin 810 has finished. And this time around, what I noticed is that in the second run, the 730G has a much lower score than the first run. And the Kirin 810 has managed to keep its score almost intact. And that's really, really well done. I'm just waiting for the G90 to finish. And you know, this just confirms that the Kirin 810 is actually acing the Geekbench score. Alrighty, and at the end of the G90T's second run, again, much lower scores compared to the first run. The Kirin 810 seems to be the champion of Geekbench, at least. And I think that, you know, generally the performance is actually better on the Kirin 810 compared to the 730G and the G90T. So one final run of Geekbench and we'll get out an average score and tabulate it at the end for you guys. All right, so we are at the end of the third run and once again, the Kirin 810 doesn't surprise us and it's actually been really, really good scores at the end of the three runs for Kirin 810 compared to the 730G and the G90T. Uh, so yeah, and there you go. Once again, the G90T is lagging behind both the 730G and uh, the Kirin 810 when it comes to pure CPU performance. So CPU performance is where Kirin 810 definitely gets a lead. All right, so what you see on your screen right now is the final tabulated score of all the three Geekbench runs between the Kirin 810, the 730G and the G90T. And of course, the Kirin 810 has come out on top. So this is the final average score that we have for you. All right, so what we'll do next is jump to Antutu. Okay, so the next benchmark we're gonna be running 
thing is ANTO 2 and ANTO 2 is a more holistic benchmark which actually takes across uh, you know details from not just the CPU but also the CPU, the RAM and uh, you know the GPU performance all of that put together and we'll get to see what the final scores are like on all the three phones once we have uh, you know the tests run on all the three phones as well. All right, so the first run of Anto 2 is over and the Kirin A10 has come out on top with, uh, you know, the G90T following behind and of course the 730G in the final spot. The Kirin A10 has a lead in every single parameter of Anto 2's testing, which includes CPU, GPU, memory and UX. Of course, you get 6 GB of RAM on the 9X Pro, which sort of gives it a lead. But even otherwise, I think that the final score is indicative that the Kirin A10 is a much more powerful processor when it comes to both CPU and uh, GPU intensive tasks. So yeah, so that is the first run of Anto 2. Obviously, we're going to be running it two more times over to find out uh, you know an average and tell you guys how the phones perform over multiple runs all right so the second run of Anto 2 is also done and <laughs> looks like uh, you know the Honor 9X Pro is actually scored higher than the first run and even uh, the 730G uh, on the Poco X2 is also higher plus uh, you know even the G90T so of course it looks like Anto 2 is just warming up and giving out higher scores right now this time around for some odd reason. Anyway let's do our third and final run to find out where these three processors stack up against each other. <music> All right, so we're at the end of the comparison and, uh, you know, the Kirin A10 has once again come out on top with both the 730G and the G90T lagging behind it. So what you see on your screen right now is the final tabulated average scores of all the three processors inside the 9X Pro, the uh, Poco X2 and, you know, the Redmi Note 8 Pro. And of course, the Kirin A10 inside the, uh, you know, 9X Pro seems to have come out on top once again. No points for guessing. Hey guys, what's up? So we're going to start off with our Call of Duty testing on uh, the Poco X2 first. So we've chosen Call of Duty because PUBG hasn't been optimized for uh, Kirin A10 yet and it would be doing injustice to it, uh, to that, uh, you know, powerful processor. But Call of Duty has been optimized for all the three phones. So we're going to start off with Poco X2 with 730G. So what I'm going to be doing is running 30 minutes of testing on the phone and uh, showing you guys uh, you know, FPS reading and uh, a lot of other information as well. So let's get started. All right, first things first, I'm going to go into settings and take a look at the audio and graphics settings. And you can see that the 730G can do very high and very high, which is not the maximum frame rates, uh, but you can get very high graphics quality. All right, so I'm going to be doing high graphic quality and max frame rates because what we want is max frame rates. So we're going to be sticking to that and start off with the games. So I'm going to be playing 30 minutes of uh, you know, Call of Duty right now. And what I'm going to be doing is actually ensuring that I'm playing just one map continuously and uh, you know on all the three phones so that you know I don't uh, change the you know settings uh, as such so I'm going to be playing Nuketown Frontline all right so we can keep parity between the graphics quality on all the three phones and let's get started so as you can see right now uh, we, we are touching 60 FPS uh, you know 60 frames which is the maximum that you can get on Call of Duty so that's very important all right so let's start off with the game and see how uh, the game can handle you know, frame rates all throughout the game, uh, you know, gameplay. All right, so we've reached the uh, you know we've played around for 25 minutes and you can see that over here in the timer and uh, you know the poco x2 has definitely had some dropped frames and you can see that i'm i'm probably in the final firefight uh, before i can shut off and uh, give you guys a final reading of 
what the f you know scores are like and what the frame rate has been like along with some battery details as well plus of course the heating as well uh, so yeah so this looks like a good game i'm having fun we're at the end of almost at the fag end of 30 minutes of you know call of duty gameplay um all right so this i think i like cordite like one of my favorite guns out there one of the favorite smgs out there pretty good to play with uh, so I'll be shutting down the timer at exactly 30 minutes. It's at 28.31 right now. Let's keep playing. So we're done with 30 minutes of gameplay. Let's quickly take a look at Gamebench Pro. So we have a new uh, session that we have done out here and we can take a look at the frame rates. And you, have, you get a median frame rate of around 56 uh, with 70% of uh, you know frame rate stability. And apart from that, you, you can see that there's been a decent battery temperature rise and it's gone to upwards of 40 degrees on the poco x2 obviously it's very hot in delhi all right guys so now i have call of duty with game bench set up on the redmi note 8 pro so i'm going to be starting recording right now and we shall play a few games of call of duty on the redmi note 8 pro to see how the g90t can uh, you know actually function and we'll take a look at the frame rates and how it handles them over the course of 30 minutes which of course I will tabulate and show them in the end as to what the final scores look like. So now you can see that settings page on the Redmi Note 8 Pro, you can see that the quality can go up to very high, but the frame rate can go only up to high. So that's uh, a bit of an issue. All right, so let me just play in this setting only and we're gonna be playing Frontline and Nuketown as usual. All right, so we're at the final five minutes. I've already played 25 minutes on the Redmi Note 8 Pro with the G90T. And uh, you can see that the G90T has actually held up well. Uh, oddly enough, the difference between high and max frame rates, very high and max frame rates, it doesn't seem to be much. I mean, even the Redmi Note 8 Pro is doing 60 FPS. Uh, you know, it can touch 60 FPS. Of course, the average is gonna be lower. But the whole point is that, uh, you know, you can play the game well on the Redmi Note 8 Pro. But of course, the problem with the G90T is that it definitely heats up more. We will see that in the final, uh, you know, temperature chart that we'll get in the end. But for now, let me just finish off the last five minutes of gaming, which I'm gonna be recording and showing it to you guys. All right, so we're done with 30 minutes of gaming on the Redmi Note 8 Pro with the G90T. Let's quickly take a look at what the final game bench scores look like and, uh, you know, what are the recording session show. Of course, we play 30 minutes of game and uh, we've got 50, uh, you know, 56 FPS, uh, which is the frame rate stability and, you know, the the stability is around 72 percent the median frame rate is around 56 and uh, of course the battery temperature battery drain is around minus four percent per hour but of course it has touched 42 degrees on the redmi note 8 pro in fact it's gone even beyond 42 degrees which is a problem with the g90t generally so all right uh, i'll obviously tabulate all of this in the end and show it to you guys but for now let's switch finally to the Kirin 810 on the Honor 9X Pro. All right, so now we're gonna be starting off Gamebench recording on the Honor 9X Pro. You can see that the recording has started and the frame rates are around here as well. Obviously, the first thing I'll go and do is show you guys what the graphics setting is like on the Kirin 810. So you can see that the Honor 9X Pro can also do very high and very high, but of course it can do high and max as well. All the ragdoll and the depth of field and uh, real-time shadow effects are actually on right now and now we will head into frontline and nuketown on the honor 9x pro and start playing the game So as you can see, we have finished around 30 minutes of gaming on the Kirin 810 as well. And the median FPS is around 59, which is much higher than both the G90T and the 730G plus the, you know, uh, you know, frame rate stability is also much higher, which is around 79%. 
plus the battery temperature has not gone beyond that of the 730G and the G90T. So what we'll do right now is show you guys a tabulated format of all the scores that we have managed to capture with GameBench on the Kirin 810, the 730G and the G90T. All right, so what you guys see on your screen right now is, um, you know, the GameBench comparison that we did between the Kirin 810, the 730G and the G90T, which gives you a clear idea that the Kirin 810 is leading when it comes to gaming performance, especially on Call of Duty. You get a median FPS of 59, which is definitely higher than the 56 achieved by the other two chipsets and the FPS stability, which is possibly the most important thing when you're gaming when you you should not have frequent fps drops and that also is higher on the kirin a10 which is at 79 percent compared to 70 percent on the 730g and 72 percent on the g90t now again another very important thing you know when you are gaming is that your phone doesn't heat up and the g90t is possibly the worst of the lot where it goes up to 42 degrees compared to 39 degrees on the kirin a10 now, obviously i was testing this in a confined environment where AC was on and therefore this 42 degrees seems like a really high number. Now overall with respect to gaming performance and if you're looking at Call of Duty, considering Call of Duty is the game that has been optimized for all the three chipsets and PUBG hasn't been on the Kirin 810 at the moment, the Kirin 810 is actually a great gaming phone. I just hope that PUBG gets optimized really soon as well so that a lot of you guys who are active gamers would be interested in buying this phone as well. So we're at the end of the video and here we were testing if the Kirin 810 inside the 9X Pro was more powerful than the G90T inside the Note 8 Pro and the 730G inside the Poco X2. And of course, the Kirin 810 has come out on top and uh, you know, it is possibly one of the best gaming phones out there uh, considering the fact that it is also priced very low. So if you guys are interested in a phone purely for gaming, then you can take a look at the Kirin 810 toting on a 9X Pro. And that's the only phone that you can get right now with the Kirin 810. With the 730G, you do have a few options. And of course, with the G90T, you have the uh, Realme 6 as well. But of course, with the Kirin 810, you get the 9X Pro now. And the 9X Pro is definitely a great, great, great phone for gaming. So what did you guys think? Do let me know in the comment section below. Until next time, this is Aishar from Mr. Phone signing off. Goodbye and Godspeed, my friends.